All over Cambridge, people are taking action to protect the environment and to promote sustainability. We're getting more efficient and we're becoming more aware. And yet, despite these efforts, our carbon footprint continues to grow. We need to stop adding to the concentration of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. Otherwise, the climate emergency will get even worse, and research shows that Cambridge could be locked into a future below sea level in as little as 50 years. Clearly, we need to do more. That's why climate activists, urban design experts, and neighborhood leaders are coming together to support Net Zero. Net Zero is a groundbreaking proposal to promote renewable alternatives in the daily operation of large new buildings in the city of Cambridge. Buildings account for 82% of our city's carbon footprint. Getting to net zero is easier than it sounds. That's because we have the ability to choose clean, renewable sources of energy over the grid right now. In fact, alternatives are available for as little as two cents more per kilowatt hour. For the typical Cambridge resident, making the switch would add just a few extra dollars to the monthly electric bill. And that's just the beginning. Net Zero is about more than choosing alternative suppliers. It's also about promoting efficiency and encouraging investment in on-site generation of renewable energy. Here's some examples of Net Zero in Cambridge. In June, the city broke ground on the new MLK School on Putnam Ave, a 169,000 square foot building that was designed to achieve Net Zero status through a combination of smart practices and clean technologies. 60% of the school's power will be generated on-site by photovoltaic panels and ground source heat pumps, and the remaining energy needs can be satisfied by connecting the school to cost-effective alternatives over the grid. Now let's consider a more challenging example, the new home of Millennium Pharmaceuticals at 300 Mass Ave. Developers of this 248,000 square foot biolab have already pledged to supply between 35 and 70% of the building's electrical needs from renewable sources. That's a great start. Now suppose we add 18,000 square feet of solar to the design. Thanks to government incentives, this investment would pay for itself in four years. After that, it would yield nearly a million dollars in added value, enough to help offset the cost of maintaining the net zero standard. In conclusion, we have the means and the technology to start building for a fossil-free future right here in Cambridge. With net zero, we can ensure that future development does not add to the concentration of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. Net zero has already been endorsed by Bill McKibben, State Senator Will Brownsberger, State Representative Carl Shortino, the Massachusetts Sierra Club, the Cambridge node of 350MA.org, the Harvard chapter of Students for a Just and Stable Future, Green Cambridge, the Cambridge Residents' Alliance, the Association of Cambridge Neighborhoods, and over 200 Cambridge residents and local experts. The Net Zero Plan was filed as a citizen zoning amendment by Cambridge attorney Mike Connolly, and it's now pending before the City Council and the Planning Board. Visit www.netzerocambridge.org to sign the petition and learn more.